Thank you, Professor Kuo, for your kind introduction. I also want to thank to the organizing committee for inviting me to this uh, fruitful conference. My name is uh, Takao Ito from Japan. Uh, this is, I'm very honored to be, to convey the last talk for the session today. The title for my present talk is uh, Wood Culture of Near Sight Along the Silk Road. Let me show the uh, location of Near Sight, where it is located. The, Silk Road runs from the Western country, uh, Rome, Italy, Alexandria, Egypt, from, from Rome, Alexandria to Far East, Nara, Japan, Japan. In the center of Silk Road, you will see Sinchan Urumuchi Autonomous uh, Region. When we uh, take a look at this region closer, here, most of this, this region covered by huge desert, so-called Takurimakan Shamu. The near site is located in the desert. Here, number four is the near site. Near site is on the uh, southern loop. The, actually, the Silk Road is uh, divided into three routes in this region. Northern route, central route, southern route. Okay? And the near site is located in the, on the southern route. However, the present road is 120 kilometers south from the near. We can see any road passing through near site. So it takes, it takes three days from Minfong to near site. Just 120 kilometers. First 90 kilometers, we, we run man-made road. Another 30 kilometers. Desert. However, it took three days because of the trouble of uh, automobile. And also, uh, near site is located on the near rivers. Here. This is the view of a near site from above the satellite. Mm -hmm. Here you'll see near river, running from north to south. The river already dried up, but in the southern part, near Mingfeng, some water remained. The red circle shows the area of near site. Northern end, central, uh, place located, Sutupa is located in the southern end where the ancient bridge is located. Let's talk, the, let's show the history of the investigation of a near site. Oral Stein from England first investigated near site 1901. He investigated second time 1906 third time, 1914, followed by Chinese group in 1959, followed by Japanese group, uh, National Growth Casting Association group, with, together with uh, uh, one famous uh, writer, Yasushi Inoue, in 1980, followed by, again, Japanese group, mainly Bukkyo University group, uh, organized by Yasu, Yasutaka Kojima for 10 years from 1988 to 1997. I was one of the, this member. 
And I visited the near site, 1994. Afterwards, I visited the uh, Archaeological Institute in Urumuchi for two times, 1996 and 1997. The, the, this institute uh, collected uh, many wood artifacts from the near site. Of course, the, this uh, uh, investigation, these investigations, a kind of official investigation. However, many, many non-official investigations have been done. Most famous is uh, I have a special man. Shuan Zhang. Shuan Zhang. He is a very famous monk in Tang Dynasty. Very good at uh, Jin Lu Rong. So named as the uh, uh, Sanzang Fashi. He traveled West China and wrote a famous book of travel, Da Tang Shi Yu Ji. <laughs> According to this book, it is said, ancient near site was 12 to 60 kilometers in circumference and located in a swamp with high temperature and humidity where it was hard to walk and leaves, a kind of plants. Leaves were growing in abundance. There were no road except the only one to go to the city. So everyone had to pass the city. However, at present, we can't see any swamp. No, almost no leaves growing in near side. What is the character of near side? Is it is said uh, near side is prosperous from one century. BC to 4th century AD, shadowy old city named as Chadota in Tang Dynasty. Total area of near site cover 70 kilometers from west to east, is 25 kilometers from north to south, scattered with 70 house ruins, stupa in the center, graveyard, Tens of domestic animals, kilns, orchard, bridge, farm field, dried river, and dead forest. These remain as they were. This slide show the route for our investigation. In the center of the route, up here, the stupa is located. Where? we set up the base camp. The red dots show the place where the wood sample were collected. One square is a one length, uh, this longitudinal length, roughly 1.5 kilometer, and the horizontal length, more than one kilometer. Upper left show the base camp. Lower left, time of meal. Upper right show time for brief rest during our investigation. Lower right, very important. <laughs> Proof of my visit. During investigation, we took the camera lighting to preserve the site. This shows the house range. More than 70 of this, this kind, uh, kind of house ruins can be seen in this site. The only pillar, bare pillars are remain. When you look closer, the pillar each pillar has many cracks. 
the size of one pillar is uh, some deviation, but uh, from 15 to 20 square in size. 15 to 20 square uh, centimeter in size. Some uh, house has fence made by reeds and shrubs like tamarics. This is the present house near the uh, near side. Main frame is a uh, wood and covered by clay. I imagine the house in near site must be similar to this kind of uh, uh, style. Upper left show the trees in the yard already fell down. The size is uh, more than 30 centimeters. This is a natural uh, grown tree, already died. You see many cracks, green cracks. And uh, some uh, piece of bark has been fallen down. Uh, here, this is bark. Up here, show the ancient bridge, ancient bridge. So river run horizontal direction. This slide shows the uh, huge uh, dead forest, very huge area. And uh, each tree, the size of each tree is from uh, 30, roughly 30 centimeters or more. This is a higher manifestation. You can see the bark attached to the tree. The shape of this kind of tree shows Uya, Hoplus euphratica. Near the southern end of the dead forest, it, is very inter it was very interesting, we saw living Fuya. Living Fuya. You see the leaf is very green color. The evidence is very interesting to, to know when the dead forest, th this forest was dead. I'll mention later. This is the table of the wood identification, natural trees and building materials. We identified 33 pieces of natural grown trees, mostly hoplas, I should say hoplas euphratica. Some salix, tamarix, and aragonus. I also identified the 60 pieces of wood, 60 wood, 62 wood pieces, mostly hoplas some others. I identified 30, 13 pieces of yard trees, nine poplars, two uh, salix, one tamarix, one eragons. The wood from house ring, I identified nine pieces. Those are pillars and the beams. All were poplars, poplars euphratica. Two of the ancient bridge was identified as poplars. As we see in this table, only limited number of species were used for natural trees and uh, building material. The most most important species was poplars, poplars euphratica. Let's move on to the wood artifacts. Here, this shows the wood table. You can see the old uh, letters, so-called Karoshti letter. Here you will see the uh, pot cover. I saw, I fo we found uh, this pot cover during our investigation. Hook. Spindle wheel, this spindle wheel is made by tamarix bark. Motor for igniter. <coughs> coffin, this is a square type of coffin. In the coffin, you see the bow here, bow here, and arrows here. 
dead body is covered by blockade. The meaning of blockade is wishes for prosperity and long life of descendants. It is interesting. Urushida Kawea were also found. Not many, but some. There are many different agricultural implements were found. Buddhist sculptor, bowl, cone, and tools were making carpet. I don't know. This is a table uh, of our, uh, this shows the result of our wood identification for the wood artifacts. Coffin. We identified 18 pieces of wood. Among 18, 15 was populous, populous euphoric. And igniter plate, populous, igniter mortar, populous. Arrow, two salix, one eragnus. Spindle wheel, four tamaric spa, not wood, tamaric spa, one salix. And to tie the rope, the tool to tie the rope. Tamarix, one tamarix, one tamarix bank. Mouse trap, poplas, axe, tamarix. Hook, two eragnus, yo, poplas, wood table, poplas, wood rubber, Poplas, bowl, salix. I don't know how this is a tool to uh, make carpet. I'm not sure this uh, tool. Poplas, wood bowl, poplas, bearing block, poplas, hot cover, poplas, wooden cylinder, poplas, circular artifacts, poplas, unknown artifacts, poplas, five poplas, four salix, three elements. So many, many wood artifacts have been uh, discovered. Again, as you see in this table, most important species was poplas, euphratica. And some salix, eragnus, and tamarix. Only four or three, four or five species was used for wood artifacts in near site. Those species growing around the near. This shows the Poplus euphratica. Leaf of Poplus euphratica. Very, very much character. However, another, this uh, Fuyang have uh, another leaf, very sharp leaf, like uh, willow. This is the uh, wood of uh, Fuyang. I made a preparation from this wood. This is a kind of standard uh, preparation. Uh, cross section of excavated uh, huya. Tamarix was growing on top of mound. This is a mound. Uh, height was uh, roughly three to five meters. Not too, too big. Here. Yeah. Tamarix was growing. We, we saw many, many, many this kind of mound in this uh, near site. This is a tamarix leaf, tamarix wood, but uh, this is a uh, not stem wood, stem wood, but uh, root wood. Stem wood is uh, like this, uh, very narrow, very narrow, but root wood. Very big, uh, five, more than five centimeter, sometimes 10 centimeter in diameter. So people in near, uh, ancient near people utilize this root wood for making some wood artifacts. I made a cross sect, I made a preparation from this root wood as a standard preparation. This is a excavated cross section of a excavated Tamarix. Bark of tamarix. Salix, eragnus. 
In addition to wood identification, I did the carbon dating of wood remains to know how old the, this uh, site is. We, we selected uh, 18 pieces of wood uh, from this different location and uh, different uh, uh, wood artifacts. Large tree, natural tree, large tree, small tree, morass like tree. The Chinese people said, uh, this is a morass, but I identified uh, populus, Huyang. Pillar of house, large tree, again pillar of house, tree in dead forest, again tree in dead forest, ancient bridge, base of house, tree in the yard, tree in the yard again. Wood piece in house ring, again wood piece in house ring. Leaves in coffin. Wood piece in house ring. Leaves in ruin, north of near. This is another historic site. So, this is the, the age roughly ranges from 1400 to 2000 years old, except three, number eight, nine, and 18. Number 18, another ruin. This ruin was 1000 years older than near site. To know the rough dates of the wood sample, these data should be subtracted from 1950. This is a very important dating, date for carbon dating. Average of 15 data, except these three, was 224 AD. Very close to the written record in the with tablets. I'll show you later. And uh, let's go back to the number eight and nine. Number eight and nine. Very recent. This, uh, this uh, data showed very recent. This, uh, I showed you, this uh, the uh, huge dead forest. I collect, collect two samples from this uh, forest. However, this uh, forest what I should say, this forest died very recently. And uh, as I showed before, the, the living, we, saw, we found living uh, Fuyang near the southern end of this uh, uh, dead forest. This is a good evidence to support of this evidence. So, conclusion, ancient Nia people utilize only limited number of species in their daily living, such as Populus euphratica, Tamarix, Salix, Eraignus, which are naturally grown around the Nia. However, some other wood artifacts, such as Urushi Laka Weir, must be brought in from Eastern China by a Silk Road. The second, wood culture had been developed in ancient Nia in spite of desert environment. The third, carbon dating of 224 AD was in good agreement with the written record found in the wood tablets as a this equivalent to 269 AD. It is suggested that the dead forest in India perished more recently. At the last of my talk, 
I would like to explain this uh, image. Bottom two is a national treasure of Shosoin. It's a national treasure is roughly 8th century treasure brought in 8th century. Upper two is a wood artifact excavated from Ashtana uh, uh, graveyard in near the Tolfan Xinjiang Urumqi region. When you compare, this, uh, this is a go board, this is dice board. When you compare each of two, you see very similarity. Especially this dice ball, the carving, shape of carving, the shape, same, okay? Drawing, the same. So this evidence uh, tells us that the part of wood culture was uh, brought in from Western China to Japan in ancient time. Thank you for your attention. Dr. Ito, uh, a uh, long time ago I heard a story about the Huyang. The Huyang is supposed to cry. So there are teardrop going to fail, fall down from the Huyang. Did you ever attempt to, to just to curiously investigate about the Huyang, whether really they, they, they cry? Namira, Huyang no Namira. Do you, I know, story are this, yo? I know, Jukok de ne, Kono Namira gane, Huyangara, Huyanga, ne, Namira on Nagas in this. Ah, so say, Antano, Kono Huyang no Namira, Scotch investigates, she must. I only saw that almost three dead, 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 Huyang. <laughs> I didn't see the, the Fuyang have tears. And, and do you see do you, uh, any meaning of the, the Fuyang? Probably there are some meaning because Fuyang is a very important uh, species in, in this uh, Western China. Yeah, I think so. I think somebody, somebody, somebody in the audience might be able to tell the, the, the Fuyang, I mean, the, the teardrop of Hu Yang's story, I think. So, appearance is very popular in that region. I'm not, uh, I, my memory is not that good now, but I remember I, I read something about that. So, they call it the Hu Yang Lei. Hu Yang Lei. You may then quick call the Hu Yang Lei. There is a similar story from Babylon, or the crying willows of Babylon. So the willow is salix, but in r it seems I have I have read it um, two years ago when I was looking about popular and 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 salix that it was in reality this was not willow in Babylon but it was Populus euphratica. So that's it. I'm I think it's a very interesting remark because it joins the idea that. The weeping willow in Babylon is, in fact, the Populus Euphratica. And there it, it joins your story and this story. But it has to be investigated more. <laughs> Very interesting. Talking about the mystery of Fuyan, uh, I would like to know the, the Chinese character of Fuyan. Fuyan. Before we use uh, two Chinese characters of Fuyan, uh, all name of Hu Yang was uh, uh, in place of willow, we use uh, Paulonia. Do you know the reason? The first character is the same, but second character was 
in place of Wiro, we uh, ancient people wrote uh, Pauronia. Pauton. Pauton. Yeah. yeah. According to the uh, book, old books. I don't know what is the, why the people use uh, Pauton. So thank you very much for a very informative presentation. Um, in India, we have got some 12 species of populus. More than 12 species of populus. Yeah. And we are, and we are unable to identify them up to species level. We have got more than 12 species of populus in India. And uh, we are unable to... Uh, but we have a lot of Euphratica in plantation. So we are unable to identify them up to the species level. So I want to know the feature that distinguishes Euphratica from all other popular species. It's, it's because uh, it is from the anatomical uh, sense, it is not easy to know, to know Poplus Euphratica from other Poplus. However, as I showed you, the, uh, the Poplus Euphratica was growing near the southern end of the dead forest. And all those uh, dead trees, the shape tells Poplus Euphratica. So I said Poplus Euphratica. Thank you. Thank you very much.